I'm Amory Hart, and welcome back to another episode of How, how You been? been, our limited series podcast where we ask our OG YouTube friends how they've been. It's sponsored entirely by DoorDash. DoorDash mm-hmm. is an incredible app where you can get food delivered right to your door, whether it's your local favorite, whether it's a chain like Cheesecake Factory uh. or Chipotle, or I don't know, I'm going to say TCBY because our guest this week loves himself some ice cream. Yes, he does. <laughs> and uh, we are, you know, you might... S- think that our energy is down but we're just conserving our energy Mm -hmm. because this is about to be a uh frenzied beautiful reunion of uh you know uh, kindred spirits we're talking to michael buckley today michael buckley save the best for last (sighs) we absolutely adore him we kind of know how he's been because we religiously watch his instagram story and it's at the top of my algorithm the only one i watch every day and i feel like i haven't done my actual part in society if i don't watch every day exactly and i'm so excited to be spending this friday day of fries with him <laughs> so let's ask michael buckley how, how you been? been i've never been better thank you so much for having <laughs> me thank you for that did you <laughs> i'm so good should i do a single word answer should i do a sentence should i go into a monologue about legitimately how have i been since what we about, last saw each other in 2019 oh i'm Oh, Mamrie, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was was busy in college being Albert Peterson and Bye Bye Birdie. When they gave haiku lessons, I was like, no, thank you. I'm studying to be an English teacher for Miss Rose Alvarez. Again, I've lost time and space and what's real and what's not. I love you both. Hello. Hello, Michael Buckley. I'm wearing a Colorado sweatshirt just for you. It's beautiful. In your honor of not drinking, I'm having one for you. We're drinking a little red wine. (laughs) Please get hammered on my behalf. I'm all, I'm all for the drink. Just because I don't partake anymore, like have ten for me. Get I yourself l- ready for me. Have two proseccos. Have some red wine. What have are a, you? What are you drinking I'm, though? What is I know sense, he's, uh, you have some watermelon drink. Uh, a sensible to your... little croy, not sponsored, but no. we'd love to, we'd love to take your money. So reach out to the podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's pastique, it's watermelon, it's naturally essenced. I love that they've decided to identify as naturally essenced. Like it's 2021. What does that and mean? I, no idea. Wow. No uh, idea. Well, I feel like I'm, I'm that describes your personality is that you are naturally essenced. You thank are. you. I mean, there's nothing natural about this, but thank you. <laughs> thank but you're you. bubbly, you're naturally but, essenced. Yeah. You got a it's great lovely. can. It 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 works. There you go. There yes, you go. Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um but oh, first so, much uh, so many uh, uh, burning questions because we have been catching up with all of our old school YouTube friends and it's been very very fun and I feel like you know, we've talked about how we kind of know where you're at because you're the only person we watch religiously on Instagram. Only person every I can give a day. shit about. Thank every you. Every day, and your authenticity and your growth on Instagram is just so. I love it, and I feel like yes. I haven't gone to church if I haven't watched your yeah. story. Yeah. Oh, well, she said church. I was gonna say yeah. like it's all. It's my meditative yes. moment of the day to yep. see Thank the you. energy that you are putting out into the universe. Yes. Yeah. But uh, my biggest question is because you are constantly you know you you said that this year is the year that you are solidifying this person that you have become which is absolutely beautiful Mm -hmm. so when you (laughs) 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 she's getting real out of the gate i say i've said it before i'm like i watch grace like host mode and i'm just i'm over here watching well i'm just i'm always so fascinated about like what you're you're always like working to improve yourself in some way or to figure out like what you don't need to work on what right now is the stuff that you you're focusing on for yourself because the world's opening back up you're getting yep. back into football you're getting your you got vax yeah. you're all of oh, it yeah. so we'll what talk is, more about that yeah what, what are you working on right now so i'm most focused on the pace of my day that's what mm. i just wrote down when you asked me what i'm working on but just to clarify what you said it's it's such a beautiful way that i <laughs> I'm like, it was such a beautiful way you expressed it grace because <laughs> you heard but but I do. Like, I look back at my journals, and my red journal is me practicing. Mm-hmm. My black and uh, blue journal are me rehearsing. And now my new latest journal is me just solidifying. Because the version of myself that I've become, it took a lot of practice. And yeah. I look back at my notes about myself in, like, 2016, 2017, and 2018, and I'm like, you didn't believe this. Mm-hmm. Like, you really were working on becoming this version of yourself 
And and now I think because it was a year of lockdown and not leaving the house and not really interacting with people and running around, I just had a year to really solidify all the beliefs I wanted mm. to believe about myself. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you for mentioning that. And the number one thing I'm focused on right now is re-engaging in the world in a way that is uh, a perfect exertion of my energy because I'm someone who used to go overexerting and I no, know what it's like to go. <laughs> I mean, how dare you yeah, exactly. say that Exactly, I've yourself. given too much. Uh, cut so, to the Backstreet Boys video of all of us drunk dancing. Right, at right. I got one speed. I got one speed. It's all in. And so I feel like I'm working on the pace of my day. And if I have nine calls or if I have two calls, I'm still mindful of the energy I'm exerting. Mm -hmm. I always think think I'm never overexerting, burning out, running around, mm -hmm. hustling, and I'm not underexerting. I'm lazy. I'm bored. I don't know what to do. So I'm really enjoying the pace of my days. And that's what I'm focused on now as I do go back in the world and I start playing sports again or going to church once a week or I, I, I signed up for some things. So I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to underdo it. I want to yeah. do it just right. So that's yeah. what I'm working on, the pace of my days. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta, you're coming in for the land. Oh, well, <laughs> with the, the gym gymnast in you yeah uh, <laughs> you gotta stick the landing if you're flipping too fast if you're coming in there too fast you're you gonna also, end up on your ass right and you also I, don't want to you don't want to freak people out at the mall when you're walking around <laughs> and when you're coming in too so, hot trying he's to so in, if you he's coming in with football flags roller skate <laughs> <laughs> you're like, so literally if you watch my instagram story <laughs> you'll be like this guy <laughs> I'm not sure what he does. All I know is he gets his car washed a lot and he goes to the mall a lot. Like that's what I'm giving off to the world. Well, you like, give off that. But it's I don't know exactly what his job is, but he loves his life no yeah. matter what he's mm -hmm. doing. And that to me life. is the absolute endless vibe that you give Thank off you. on your stories. And I appreciate Thank it you. so, so much. I Thank love you. it. I would like to talk a little bit when you're talking about speed because one of my... <laughs> No, I'm not doing speed, uh, the speed of your life and energy exertion, mm. because I actually think you have a Zen like, yes, relaxation state at night. Like, oh, you, the way you set up your night with like, you know what? I am going to have ice cream and I'm not going to die. it. Right. I'm going to put away my Sensible. phone and I'm going to watch four episodes of Golden Girls. And then I'm going to watch something I've seen 50 times because that's actually what's going to bring yes. me some happiness. OK, it's yes. like and, and P.S. your robe. What did you skin a bear? <gasps> it's incredible. It is, it is too yeah. good for this world, first of all. <laughs> and also, I remember the seeing of that robe and thinking, could I be the type of person who wears such a robe? And funny story <laughs> i bought it for my twin sister for christmas uh -huh. of course she didn't like it and then i put it on i was like well i love it i'll keep it so i, I saw you post yeah. that and that was this year when snl put out the sketch <laughs> about and, and mom gets a robe and you're like right. i got my sister a robe right. and i'm keeping right. it but okay yes. so your evenings i feel like okay. you have become you're very good at decompressing yes and i have a big question because my issue my i mean they make statements all right, well, this is <laughs> no, I approve. I object. <laughs> I'm not sensible. I'm not peaceful. I sure have fooled you, Mamrie. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you bring up something that is so interesting to me because I have a terrible time um, shutting off at the end of the night and falling asleep yeah. and putting my phone away. And you seem, maybe this is, I don't know, you seem to have effortlessly developed the system for yourself in which you put your phone down and now you go to bed and you, mm -hmm. you wake up and you're like, I had the best night's sleep. Yeah. And is yeah. that effortless? Or yeah. is this a learn? Did you like figure out what your, dare and I, I say like, it, give nighttime me all routine of the tips is. and tricks because I have a hard time with that. So that's, thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, so I love, I'm a sensitive <laughs> you're not, you're person. You're running for Miss Denver. You don't have to thank us for every thank question. Thank you for the question. I've been in the there. isolation booth. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to thank speak so my truth. <laughs> It was great to see you, Grace. I have to go. <laughs> no, I'm so, so curious. I have successfully coached myself into a nighttime routine okay. that is intentional. And it is. It's something that I would use to very easily 
comfortably be up till 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. watching yeah. TV, Same. looking on Facebook or Instagram. And then, and I, Mindless. that was just my, my normal. Yeah. My normal was, I, and I, so now the main thing is I start to decompress way earlier in the day. So like I used to wait until nine or 10 and then I'm like now at 11 and then suddenly it's two in the morning. So I am, once this is over tonight, I am going to start to decompress around five or six. So like I'm already signaling to my body, the day's almost over. And I do, do not sleep with my phone in bed anymore because that Mm. was the number one thing. I would wake up, I would look at my phone. It'd be an hour later. I was tweeting things at two in the morning. I was responding to things (laughs) and I was making lists for tomorrow. So I gave myself permission to have my phone and use my phone. Mm. And now it's literally on my wall. So I have a list of my five or six goals in life. And one of them says new habits, no phone in bed. The other habit is no internet stalking, which we can talk about that too. Ah, But those are, so when I look at my, life, I'm always looking what costs me time, what makes me time. And we all have 24 hours in the day. And I know what costs me time. And what costs me time is phone in bed. What costs me time is looking up people who I know will drive me crazy. Megan Kelly on Twitter, (laughs) former YouTubers who I think are very annoying. And I really just want to see if they're still tweeting weird shit. They are. And so... (laughs) I've stopped. I used to mute them, but I'd still look. Yeah, Because I was... Look, right. I mean, I know. I know you tried to give up coffee, too, and that didn't work out for you. Uh, and so there's some vices that you can keep in your life, and they're not harming anyone not else but monk. yourself. Hey, big news. Guess what? what? You're breaking news. About I monks? Was, uh, no, about. <laughs> what, so is it I was your toe? Giving, I, you guys, I love <laughs> you so much. My toe is fine. My thumb is a mess. I was celibate since yeah. no December of 2019. Okay. I had sex yesterday for the first time. You're welcome. Buck, how was this not the first person thing you said when you turned on your audio and camera? Oh, I, I know. So paper. I I fell in the <laughs> toilet. They gave me the wrong dog paw. I had penetrative sex for the first time in over a year. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning in. If my father is listening, Daddy, I've been so good. Oh, okay. thank you to DoorDash for sponsoring this. <laughs> season. I mean, truly, they, we brought a, a checked bag because there's a lot to unpack. Wow, you got me at the right chapter of my life for some sharing. Oh, okay, I want to wow. hit every single one of these subjects. Yes, but the first thing okay. I want to hit is is you hitting it. I feel like <laughs> after that long of a time, expectations. You, well, expectations or or low expectations or also just being like. Which one will I choose? Like, so, mm. so, like, I chose how- both. Um, no, <laughs> so, oh. I, so, so to answer, like, make free space. So, the thing about sex is, I've talked to you guys about Tell this Tell me before, about it, because I've never been told. <laughs> I mean, May- well, Mabry was there. Like, Mabry knows where the bodies are buried. Like, Mabry was there. <laughs> so, I was monogamously married for 13 years and I didn't consider other people. I was living a very heteronormative, committed relationship and I loved it. And then I decided to become a whore or sex positive as the kids are calling it. it. I'm not, it's like you uh, you repress a lot of things and then you have to absolutely explore the things that have been super repressed. And then you find out that they're not exactly for you necessarily, but you got that out of your system. Yeah. And so, I mean, I feel I wanted to stop having sex to just recalibrate my, to re-examine my relationship with sex. And mm. so it's been a, what? and also let's be honest, it's very easy to be celibate during a global pandemic. Yeah. I, I wasn't, I'm like, you're I, calling it celibacy. Was, I'm calling it a pandemic. Right. <laughs> yes. It was a dry spell. No, I chose, I wasn't hooking up. I wasn't making out. I was barely interacting mm. with people. So mm-hmm. it was, but I did decide to not have sex in December of 2019. And then March came and it was right. like, well, you're locked down. And so I, you know, I stopped taking PrEP, which is an Mm anti-HIV medication that lots of the gays take. Mm -hmm. And I just stopped going on apps. And and so, but no, I just, I don't, and I'm not dying to have sex. Like I've enjoyed the break and I just, but But yesterday. Did enjoy the inauguration? It was wonderful. It was Mm. with a friend who I am very fond of and we've had sex before. So I knew it would be comfortable. And it was, when I was driving home, I did have that sense of relief of, oh, I can still perform. (laughs) And. And I did enjoy it. So, and yes, yes, went both ways. So good for yeah. me. Very skilled in the sex department. I <laughs> also like that's a great sign of friendship. You yes. Helped yeah. each other Very out. Trusted. But yeah. I, I also, what's crazy to me is that you've been celibate this long and yet you grew 
I think the icon of a good lover, this mustache. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me tell you. That mustache I mean, is pure sex sitting above your top lip. Yeah. What and is, you weren't uh, even doling it out. Was that on, is that on your goals list this year? Is it one of the five or six goals? It was not. Okay. But I, I, so <laughs> I, I grew like a mustache. had to refer to the list. I looked over. Is it there? It's not there. <laughs> So, I mean, no, with the mustache and the blonde weave, it's like she looks good. Like she's yeah. coming to her own at 45. You look but, incredible. Thank you for the compliments. But so, no, I just feel I grew a mustache in 2018. Didn't go well. Like it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Like, literally, my odds, like, my odds on Facebook are, like, ill. <laughs> it's like, like, friends from high school are like, please shave, you're creepy. So, this was 2018. The world was not ready for they Michael Buckley ready. and a mustache. Yes. And let me tell you, when I came back this year with a mustache, the world was ready for it. <laughs> and so, timing. It's all about timing. Yep, yeah. The world was ready for it. So, it's a big hit. Wow. And I like it very much. So, I thank remember, you for. You were doing back then, you were doing polls. And I was like, hey, I, I feel like yeah. I was like the, yeah. the biggest advocate for this. Same. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. yes, please. Yeah. It looks fantastic. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Like thank Cheryl you. Crow said, if it makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, my. <it's> okay. <laughs> Someday I just want to come on and talk about Cheryl Crow. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm trying I'm to fine. sneak her into every podcast. You know, <laughs> many thoughts about place. Cheryl Crow. Did you forget that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with restaurants you love right now and right to your door. And now you can get the grocery essentials you need with DoorDash too. Get drinks, get snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. I sound like I could use some sort of um, throat coat. Perhaps I should consult my DoorDash. Ordering is easy. You open the DoorDash app, you choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Uh, you wouldn't believe, but about 12 hours ago, I actually used DoorDash to order Cheesecake Factory. Hence, you know, maybe my, why I sound like this this morning. And for a limited time, you guys can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code HH. Y B. That's 25% off up to $10 in value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code HHYB. Don't forget code HHYB for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change. Terms apply. Buck, I'm so curious because now you've been in Colorado for how long? Four years? You know, this Three? is my third full year. I, I Fourth full year. I got there December 2017. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how are you liking? I mean, you've really developed into this brand new person to in me, Colorado. To me, you're the like. mayor of Denver. Yeah, truly. Oh that God. I'm like, he's, but also you live in this like sitcom world in my head that it's like <laughs> you live in your sister's basement and you talk to your niece and nephew mm -hmm. uh, during the day and you go roller skate and you go to the mall and I'm like flag football. This is, yeah, this is my favorite sitcom <laughs> every you. day. Uh, how has it been for you the last three or four years that you've been there? I mean, it's so magical. And I mean, when I moved here in December 2017, mm -hmm. I looked at my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, and I said, I will stay for three months. Like in my brain, I'm really? like, I'm moving there. Well, I just thought, to they're not going to want me. Sure. They have three children. They don't need whatever. But my brother-in-law looked at me and he said, well, we want you here. And oh, I remember oh. hearing him, but still in my my brain, I'm like, I should go at some point. And after the first year, I was like, maybe I'll whatever. And it's been three years. And honestly, this is where I belong. Like, yeah. there's nothing. I feel like I belong with them. I feel like I'm an integrated part of the family. Like, I could go buy a house and I could go live by myself or I could whatever. But this is also... And I think a lot of YouTubers feel this way. I feel like before I was in different chapters of my life and I couldn't wait to get to the next one or I was always, yeah. I was never fully present. I was yep. always 
always thinking this will go away and this is dumb yep. or I better figure out what's next. I better go on a TV meeting. I better develop a city. I better do. I was always never present. I was always, mm. and this is the happiest chapter of my life and I really don't want it to end. Oh. And so at some point it will end. But for now I'm like, I just want to enjoy watching these children grow up yeah. and I want to enjoy the simplicity of living in a basement. And I really, everything about my life is just lovely. And so why mess with it? So yeah. I just want to enjoy it. <laughs> I love that. And what like, what an incredible thing too for your niece yeah. and nephew oh, to, to be like thanks. the um, casualness of you being present and it not just being like, yes. it's a visit. We have a lot of pressure to, you know, cause Grace knows I'm like looking to get a place in North Carolina, not to move to, but to go a couple months so yeah, I can like yeah. see family in in a casual mindset yeah. as opposed to I'm here. Let's make memories. Also, I'm already annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I have uh, uh, my spectrum of emotions is I'm super into you. And I also Cannot super want to not be around <laughs> you at all. <laughs> so. Right. It's the little moments of just like May is turning 10 tomorrow. And when we're done with this, mm -hmm. I'm going to take her to Target and I'm going to let her buy whatever she wants. And oh, I'm going to take yeah. her to Menchie's and we're going to get frozen yogurt. Uh, and again, you guys have seen her on my Instagram story. She's charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. And she's um, yeah, she's silly. a little yeah. She's got some Buckley she, blood in her. Oh my god, she just <laughs> and she makes jokes at my expense yeah. so beautifully and effortlessly. Yes, yes, and yes. so I'm so she proud puts of you her. In your place. <laughs> like I'll be wearing a shirt and she'll be like, "Is that a blouse?" I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll, like, she'll ask me if I'm wearing a blouse. I'll be like, I, you know, I can't yeah. wait till she's 18 so I can say, go fuck yourself. You're, like, I, I can't yeah. wait to be sassy back. Like, let's you go are, sassy. I know, you are uh, nurturing, like, the next uh, roast oh, comic. Yes, <laughs> they all, they, they, I mean, I am bald. As you know, I wear a hair system, and they love to call me bald. <laughs> like, they love, they're just like, or, like, they'll, like, they'll ask for a hair piece. They'll be like, can I wear one of your hair pieces? And I'll be like, you, stop dragging me. <laughs> like, they're so amused how bald. Bald I am like oh, <laughs> I love it I love it's it well, well she's a, a natural performer I love mm -hmm. when you pop up your Instagram and you're just like Thanks. here's a dance we created or like she I wants love, to show you something right I also yep. love that every Instagram story starts with you going five four three two one <laughs> yeah, go. then you know Mama Rose go. is behind the lens <laughs> and she's gonna perform I'm thinking that's all I'm thank you for seeing me because that's all I'm thinking is <laughs> Well, but my for question me. is for me, for oh, me. I was gypsy in my high school production. I mean, um, <laughs> but would you ever, because you are so content in your life and, and, and no. you're incredible. No. To no. Dancers, no. No. <laughs> would you ever do like a one man show? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can I in direct next, it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I would love to do something like that. Yes. In the next five or 10 years, I would Perfect. love to consider doing something like that. Because uh. I think I have so many stories to tell and they're already packaged and beautiful. Yeah. I would love to do something like that. So thank you for asking. I don't know what I thought you were going to ask. <laughs> I thought you might say, are you ever going to make YouTube videos with you? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I would never promote well, that. Thank uh, you. <laughs> I have a question about the uh, internet content creation space because you're your nephew and your niece both like make stuff online and you've been through that and now you like you said earlier that you kind of look up uh some curious youtubers see if they're still being curious that's uh, my vice that's my vice that right. is my vice hey, it's not, that is my vice. we're all guilty of it um what do you think about like when you see your niece and nephew doing content online versus like when you were doing it like how do you see that space now do you give them any like guidelines or do you kind of let them do their own thing and let them figure it out for themselves? Yeah. I yeah. mean, my nephew is so much more connected than you to YouTube than I am. Like he follows yeah. Mr. Beast. He follows this guy, Jack, uh, Jack, I forget it. Jack sucks at life. And he, <laughs> see, he's these old, uplifting. Like, they're always, they're this always is like, like a that. Mad Libs sentence but yeah. this is how the internet has always been yeah. yeah and so he's very connected he knows i would i've logged into youtube occasionally to leave a comment on a gymnastics video from 1980 <laughs> but i i have no idea what's going on on and youtube the most no recent I comment before that was you three years earlier <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was me yeah, yeah. michael buck hollywood 2016 and i like my own comment what? and i leave another comment because yeah. i'm insane like i would go on youtube if i could be the only one <laughs> I guess like, but <laughs> Let me tell you a cute story. So Luke, so I've got one of the original YouTube um, play buttons where you get a million yeah. subscribers. I mm -hmm. was one of the first 20 or so. So it's a big, clunky, heavy, whatever. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I, 
I gave it to Luke for Christmas years ago. Luke posted a picture of it like on Reddit because his favorite YouTuber was looking for one. And the next thing you know, this guy is offering to buy it from me. And Luke and I are like in the museum. And it was funny because I don't care about things. And I just thought it was cute. So I offered to sell it to this guy for a couple thousand dollars or whatever. I mean, like, why yeah, not? I was going to say like, what, what well, price point did you put it at? Because like you, I mean, all these, what are they called? RFPs or whatever? Like the yeah. UTIs. The, no, yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The digital yeah. art that's selling yeah, now. Totally. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he a- offered me $5,000 and I said 10. Yep. And then he wrote back 7,500 and I said, okay. And he wired me the money. And then I, then we changed our mind as a family because, and it's so cute. There's videos of it on YouTube, oh, but God. it's in Luke's room. If he wants to sell it in 10 years and you get gotta, college tuition, yep. but you should I don't hold know, on but, to it. I am holding on to yeah. it, but it was a cute, it was so sweet because Luke had an interaction with his favorite YouTuber oh. and the YouTuber made a whole video about this story. Wait, which and YouTuber he couldn't was have it? Been, his name is Jack Sucks oh, at Life. Oh, that's Jack Sucks at Life, and, of course. And yeah, and he's lovely and he's British and he's gotten, an, he's lovely. He's like a <laughs> lovely boy and we follow each other on Twitter or Instagram oh. now. So I'm really rooting for him and his success and I love Luke being a fan of a great creator. And so that's, I love that our paths yeah. on YouTube overlapped because Luke's uncle used to be a famous I YouTuber. So, so it's a great. it's sweet. Well, similar yeah. thing this morning. Um I've 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 roped Grace into I've started working out, trying to do it, <laughs> trying to get stronger. Yeah. I've been going to a trainer a few times a week for like four months. Um and I do feel my body getting tighter. I just need to stop eating. Um <laughs> so much. Um but there's a fucking banging body under this. Um but so amazing. Grace comes with me and thank you. Uh, yeah, no body shaming. I look great. But you she was amazing. with us and our friend Jacqueline's nieces were coming. Oh yeah. I, uh, and yeah. and they were like, Oh yeah, I know like back in the day, like they loved Dan and Phil. And we were like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh we were like, Oh, okay. I was like, Do they know who uh I am? And, and, and her husband and her husband goes, Their mom does. She's a big fan. Uh, the mom is a, oh, that was perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the demo. It's the demo. Do you yeah. still have people reaching out to you being like, I, I think I know you from the internet. Yeah, I do. Like I'll, I got a tweet today from a girl who just, she quoted me from 2011 and she said, this just lives rent free in my head when <laughs> you said this. And you know, I do, I am in Denver and there will be gay people who it's like, they're my friends now. And then yeah. two years later, they'll be like, I watched you as a yeah. teenager. They and reveal I'm like, their truth. You, yeah. You could have told me it's fine. Um, so, I mean, it's the response response to me is always lovely. It's yeah. always like you meant a lot to my childhood. And again, I'm not, I have, I'm not, I'm not, I, that's what it's so far away from. I haven't done this in years. So I'm, yeah. I just, I'm grateful that I am remembered fondly. And <laughs> that's all. I love it. It's oh, beautiful. I have a question. I have an answer. I'm working out too. I'm working out well, too. That's what it has to do with is with your, cause Flag football, you play flag football. Do you play another organized sport? Soccer. I play indoor soccer, soccer and yes. outdoor soccer. And indoor as and well. outdoor. And I know you're Full-time so excited jog. to be back on the freaking <laughs> field. But did you have a friend who was in that league or did you? Oh, yeah. And that brought you, you in? Or were you like, you know what? I'm just going to sh- show up at the meeting. Because this so is. So shout a, out to, yeah. This is football. a beautiful thing that I feel like so many adults. people, in, adults or like, you know, teenagers in towns where they're, uh, now that the world is opening back up, but like, yeah. this is something to seek out. I'm very inspired. And because by it's, it. a, it's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. If you're going into something where people have already been teammates. Sure. You know, so and like, it's like, what's sports, that process? So, like, yeah. Yeah. But it's more of an activity and a community. Like mm. some of it's like I and I'm telling you, if you're listening to this, go play kickball, go play ultimate frisbee, go play volleyball. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like being part of a team. Yeah. And I play in a league where there's people who are division one athletes and there's people like me wow. who didn't play sports growing up. And everybody is lovely. Uh-huh. So it is a mix of fun and competitiveness. And I've signed up because there's a man named Michael James who went to college with my twin sister. And he used to just always post on Facebook. Facebook and my sister said he always looks like he's having fun doing this. And again, I thought that seems dumb. Like as a grown up who, you know, I was doing YouTube and doing red carpets and I'm like, why the hell? <laughs> Whatever sports, the hell I was I'm like, sports who the fuck wants to play flag I'm going to make some like, Miley Cyrus jokes. <laughs> right. That sounds ridiculous. And then 
So I signed up and uh, and I just, it's changed my life and I've never had so many, I mean, just friends and acquaintances mm. and I'm just part of a community yeah. and I, they're my people. Like, I love them. I love them. If any of them are listening, they mean so much to me. And even mm. if they're not on my team, they're part of the organization and it's changed my life in so many beautiful ways. And soccer, I did. I just said to my friend Aaron at a party, I know you play soccer. I'd love to play sometime. I played in sixth grade. I'm not very good. And I just, I I got pretty good at soccer. I was playing four days a week and I was getting three goals a game. And I just wanted, you know, and I mean, I always give soccer as a life coaching example because like I used to leave soccer my first couple games and I was teary eyed because I'd be playing with people and they'd be like, motherfucker, buck, possess them, like be yelling. But soccer is lots of yelling. And I would get, and I'm like, so, do I need to tell the captain? Can you tell him not to yell at me? Or do I need to say something? Or do I just need to life coach myself and not be a little bitch? And so the next wow. time I showed up at, co- at soccer, all I ever think when I'm playing soccer is I'm hardworking, I'm good spirited, I add value to the team. Yeah. And that's all I'm thinking. And I'm running around, I'm falling down, I'm making terrible plays, but my confidence <laughs> is locked and loaded because guess what? I'm hardworking, I'm good spirited, I add value to the team. Have so, you ever yay. gotten, uh, what's the equivalent of a foul? A, a red, red card? card? Have you ever, have you ever mouthed off? off and been like, you well, know what? I, I am going to yeah. fucking bring well, this. Well, I saw on your story the oh. other day that you posted a photo of you playing flag football and you posted with this woman that looked very distressed uh, uh, counter you and said she said I was very loud and I said yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the rusher is so typically just rushing. Like to imagine me yelling. So I yell go when I cross the line of scrimmage to signal to the double rush they can go. Mm-hmm. And I also, you know, part of the rush is sacking the quarterback but part of it is distracting so i might be just screaming and yelling for shits and giggles i love it um i've never gotten i let me tell you i've lost my mind at soccer twice hold that thought (laughs) i i did get called for bull rushing like i have gotten plenty of penalties in football because bull rushing is you like really hit the the blocker you're supposed to make attempts to go around and i have my first time rushing i got three penalties for bull rushing so she's aggressive (laughs) in flag football in, but, but in soccer, I lost my mind twice because I had a, a man on my team who was being difficult and mm. it wasn't a one off. It was a, he was being consistently mm. difficult. This was a and personality thing. thing. Yeah. This was a personality thing. And he was being a jerk to the ref. And mm. I literally said, I've never been so embarrassed all my life. I go to this gym. I am horrified. This is recreational soccer. You need to cut the shit. I promise you right now, you will not play on this team. And I said, I will kick you off and I will pay you the $90 you paid to play. And I, and everybody was like, thank you me after, but I was, wow. and then the next week he was a bear. And I said to the captain, you have to kick him off the team or you just, whatever. So I've lost my mind twice at recreational yeah, sports. But you lost your mind for the greater good, the vibe, for the right? greater good. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. A, my it was, brain me at every movie theater. I know my brain. <laughs> we turn yeah. uh, this into a series called Buck's Tough Love where he I, just like uh, yes. puts people in their place and gets I'm them. I'm like, this is not who we are <laughs> and I am not, this is not who you get to be and whoever's given you permission to lose your mind and be a jerk in life, I wow. will no longer be that person to give you permission to I mean, behave like this. Th- yeah, this is supposed yes. to be recreational. This is supposed to be for fun. This is the bonus yeah. of your day. This is the- And let me tell you where gays lose the plot as a gay. Gays <laughs> thinks, get, gays get sassy, mean, quick mm. and it's like again Jugular. i i used to i used to do comedy so i know what it's like to be funny and sassy yeah. i don't have a mean bone in my body right. so if i'm gonna be sassy it's gonna be hilarious and you're welcome some of these gays watch too much drag race where they're dragging uh, each other you're you you don't have the skill but, you don't yeah. have the intellect mm-hmm. to properly be sassy so i witness a lot of that at football and soccer and i'm lovely i just let them be sassy but i'm like oh dear like oh, like wow. i just like yeah, the yeah, library yeah. So this, should be closed. Yes, this was an example of just thinking you're being sassy, but yeah, you're being an, an a hole. Yes, Ooh, yes. Oh, it's reading. You've yeah, lost directly. the plot. Yes. <laughs> With comedy, we can be a complete asshole to them, and it's so clever. So clever. And they so. feel stupid. Sorry. No, yeah. we're just right, not, right, now, right. I'm this, like, you don't want to see me like that because I have a sharp tongue and I will. Do, you don't want mm-hmm. to see it. I'm I'm lovely and sassy, but again, twice a year, I'll whip out the sharp tongue. And, <laughs> and it sounds like you whipped it out yesterday. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, it was so fun. Should I go back for seconds? Well, Is he listening? I mean, Does I he want like, more? Now are you I, chasing the dragon? I, now is it like, I know. Back, well, I love that we can oscillate between talking about you being this role model <laughs> uncle to your You're niece welcome. and nephew. 
cocktail. Yeah. I had penetrative sex for the first time since 2019. Well, I'm just saying, it's like when you finally break your diet, you're like, oh, we're going <laughs> yeah. to the buffet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Old Country Buffet until it's a new country. <laughs> we're eating corn. <laughs> How did one donut become a box of 12 donuts? Oh, the oh. heart wants what the heart wants, Selena Gomez. Um, <laughs> Buck, so your daily life is uh, primarily focused around life coaching, right? Yeah. That's your yes. your primary goal I right work now. for a wonderful company, Aero mm-hmm. Senior Living. Please Which we, look them up. And we met a couple of them. They came to our show when we were in Denver, and I bought this sweatshirt after our yeah. show. Mm-hmm. They came in, uh, the two women that- They're fantastic. I forget their names, but Amanda they- Cassie, Amanda and Cassie. Amanda and Cassie. They'll be listening. Uh, yeah. They were so lovely, and we had drinks with them afterwards, and they were so, so sweet, and I wish we had yeah. more time to talk to them, but they were the uh, they work at the company that you work at. Yeah. So Amanda has changed my life. Amanda is the COO of the company and she hired me to coach her back in 2018. And that turned into, do you want to work with some other people? And it was four people. It was 10 people. And now it is the entire company. And so my day is very full. I'm in charge of leadership. I do one-on-one coaching. I do group coaching. And it's just, I love what they do. I I love their business model. And again, how cool to have a company that they have a life coach on staff. I mean, so like, this I, is, I've like, heard of this. I know. I feel yeah. like this is the the secret sauce that every yeah. company should have a life coach like you I just on that. hand to be able to talk to everyone and facilitate yeah. conversation exactly. and workflow. You want your employees to want to do better yes. and to strive and to. And We're to... making this your calling card. That if there are any other major companies out there that need someone to facilitate like a very yeah. constructive workflow, uh, Michael Buckley is your I guy. Love <laughs> I love it. And I do take on one on one clients occasionally. And mm-hmm. I still love to do that. But like I said, it's like that point where you're just like, this is so much more than enough. And yeah. I just, my days are so full and meaningful. And so, yeah. you know, if I get a, a, you could go to my website, heymichaelbuckley.com. And if you fill out the form and you want to work with me, or, you know, you could always just go to my Instagram story and click on some of the coaching tabs. I highlight a lot of old coaching and I yeah. haven't done much coaching in the last year because I'm not looking for new clients. But by all means, if you ever want some coaching to kickstart your brain, you yeah. can find it on my Instagram. Instagram story under the coaching highlight tabs. But that's <laughs> how you know. You just like, you just like uh, plugged your thing when we're getting to the end of the podcast like a goddamn pro. I mean, we didn't have to do the awkward well, like, so where uh, can people Well, also find like, you, you know. Uh, I, mean, I invented the call to action. Yeah, you did. You really <laughs> did. You really did. The I mean, for people that want to work with you, if they apply, like you're looking for a certain type of person. So, and you're looking for like, we've talked about this whole podcast timing is everything yeah. so when the right person and the right time comes the you know maybe it's a kismet match so fill out those applications wait have you ever had a client before where you were just like how do you say no this is yeah. all the we're time. breaking up all the time. i can't help really you. no oh uh well some people they they're you know most people who come to coaching you know, you'll know right away if it's not, co- if coaching will benefit for you. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, what I say right away is you're the problem and you're the solution. Mm. And so if you're not, if you're here to complain or you're here to go a deep dive backwards about my mother was this That's and this is, like, I'm not here yeah. for that. So again, I'm here moving you forward in the right direction. And so I'll know right away, you're not, you're, your brain doesn't want coaching. You just want someone to mm. say, yes, your husband's a dick and yeah. I'm not here for that or well. life is unfair. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I, I only early in my coaching career the first year because I was, I want to say desperate or wanting to coach. I had like one person or maybe two that halfway through working with them, I was like, oh, I, there's nothing I can do. They don't really want coaching. You know, well, you know where your value can, yeah, you know where you can like, yeah, create value and you know where people want your value. Um, This is, I'm exhausted because this is so fun, but I feel like we could talk for another 17 hours. But but what I love love is that I get this like, not life well I do get life coach yeah. and also meditated and yep. also like sometimes you're rocking like mm. ASMR zen evening yes. vibes where I'm just like oh he looks so comfy I should start I know. to get comfy and also I For love free. I love your tiny spats with uh like um your standing desk and the wrong uh, what was it mattress situation it's I been love a that you have suburban um, spats <laughs> I could watch I you describe your outfit every yes, day yes, for yes. the rest I of my life I love to get dressed 
rest. I just feel as someone who's worked from home since 2018 and could easily be in pajama bottoms and slippers, it's very important to me to signal to my body, it's time to work, it's time to focus. And that is, let me tell you, that's a big part of my decompressing is when I take off my shoes Mm. and my sweater and my jeans and I put on sweatpants, I'm signaling to my body, it's time to relax. So that that is a big part of my decompressing. I'm still wearing track pants and I, every day, I'm, wa- I'm wearing sweatpants, but the bra comes off. Oh, yes. and to me that says we're wild or free. T- yeah, yes. times up, times off. I have day <laughs> underwear. I have evening underwear. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, yes. we absolutely adore catching up with you as per usual. Um, you are our favorite. You're going to be our finale of this series. I know. We're this like, is like we we're like uh, if we're catching up with OG friends, we got to catch up with our closest. So, and you're the only one that you. we haven't written any questions for yeah. before we uh, uh, talk to because we, said, we were like, what's the point? What's the why would we even try to <laughs> premeditate this beautiful conversation that we will inevitably have? Well, I love have. you forever. And again, you are important people in my life. And even if I see you once a year or twice, again, you will always be two of my dear friends. Mm. And anything you ever need in life. I am here for you and I just I think the world of you and I think back like and I've said this to you before at different moments of my life that were challenging you were both there in in lovely quiet Mm. ways and I just want to say I appreciate that so much because as I transitioned off of YouTube to a different chapter your presence and your kindness and your support of me was very much needed and important. So thank you. So I guess we're going to cry in the final <laughs> episode of this fucking DoorDash yeah, series. I mean, uh, Jesus, now we're going to have to be uh, asked uh, how we've been. Uh, so I had penetrative <laughs> sex. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. Michael Buckley, you are uh, consistently one of the most wonderful people in both of our worlds. Yes. Um, for people that uh, do not know where to find you to get all of your daily wisdom uh, whether it be on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, where can people find you that don't already know? Yeah. So thank you. My website is heymichaelbuckley.com. And I would love for you to follow me on Instagram. It's heymichaelbuckley because it's fun over do there. Yourself so oh, yeah. if, you, uh, if you're going to do, if you're going to follow one person from this whole yeah. series, I please, please, please encourage you to follow Michael Buckley. It is truly my church every day, all yeah. day. Thank we you. love it. And thank one of these you. days, I am going to rent a cabin outside of Denver for two oh. weeks with a karaoke oh, machine. And, and we are just going to... I want to sit by the pool and oh. have a virgin Bahama Mama yes. Miami Vice. <laughs> Come out October. Let's do a weekend yes. in October. It's happening. Done. It's happening. I love you. Okay. We love you. It was great to be here. I love you so Holly. much. Mwah. Mwah. He, if he ain't the rootinest, tootinest, cutinest, and that was a damn journey from the dog snafu to uh, roller skating to... What his he's fo- watching. I mean, his football journey. Wow. His self journey. I, this man is, you know, the hero's journey, to say yes. the least. And I, I can't believe how much joy I get every single time I interact with Michael Buckley. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Absolutely. I mean, truly, if if I couldn't spend my life in like real love and it had to be platonic <laughs> love, me and Buck would be married in two seconds. Two seconds. Adore him. It was so nice to catch up and yes. see how, how he's, he's been. been. <laughs> we Thanks got for there. watching this we series. All 10 episodes. We really enjoyed it. Thank you, DoorDash, for Thank sponsoring you, DoorDash. it. I love that I'm doing an acceptance speech now. <laughs> I know. But I'm like, you would think by this last episode that we'd have this figured out, but absolutely not. And that's part of our charm. Give us another season. Bye, guys. See ya.